Cool. Hi, Silas. Hello, Laurie. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. How are you doing? Uh, I'm good. Yes, I'm uh, very much looking forward to this session, actually. And what I love about um, coaching, being coached, is that when you know a conversation is coming up, mm -hmm. you know, you're already thinking. You're yeah. thinking about what you want to bring to the session. You're thinking about, you know, what happened in the last session. So it, it's, you know, because there is this structure, it puts you into kind of constant mind of, of where you are and where you want to be. And I like that. Yeah. Yeah, very I, much looking forward to this. And I really appreciate that you do that and that you like that. It's, yeah. you're, it's ideal for me, that whole come from. It's really great for me to work with that. So I'm really appreciating that. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Yeah. It's just something that naturally happens, I think. You know? Good, yeah. 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 Maybe not for everyone, but it does for you, and that's a wonderful thing. Yeah, it does for me, yes. I, when I say naturally, I can only know what's going on in my own head. I, just, I can't know what, <laughs> generally speaking, goes on in other people's heads or how they work. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. naturally for me, yeah. I think it's a gift you have. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So last time we did our startup design and looked at your, you know, your way forward around this master of the making thing and mm -hmm. uh, all, not your thing, this road and journey that you're on yeah. and our design. There wasn't any specific homework for you to do, but I just wondered if there's any thoughts that you had or anything you wanted to add. Um, not really. I was, I was, uh, I mean, I really liked that phrase that we came up with master in the making, mm -hmm. you know, because for me that the making part is the important part. It, mm -hmm. it suggests a journey. It suggests a journey towards something and you know we create the word mastery in order to have you know a, a big dream to go towards but at the same time um for me it's not really about getting there that's a different kind of pressure it's right. actually about it's actually about the journey it's about the making so it's sort of about constant improvement mm. you know that's what i took from it um and I think that's the thing that, as I said, you know, because I know I'm going to another session, you know, yeah. going towards that and thinking mm. of what's coming for the next session. There is this, there is this kind of linear journey between these, you know, within this structure that we create. So, yeah, yeah that's what came up for me, actually. And, and in a way, it, it, it's a relief not to feel that I have to become a master at something. You know, yeah. that kind of, for me, that opens up more opportunity. Mm. You know, because I think that uh, it takes pressure away, but it just it gets exciting to be on a on a constant um, journey of 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 improving. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. As opposed to some kind of uh, label that you put on it that feels like a whip. Yes. Like, oh, gotta keep going. Gotta gotta yeah. get there. Gotta be a master. Yeah. 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And as we work with values today, because mm. that, that's our next step this is likely to come in in bits and pieces somewhere. I trust that it'll show up because it's inspiring to you. And, yeah. you know, a lot of values are, are about what inspires us. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and funnily enough, I can even, as we're talking, you know, I, I can link what I've just said, you know, off the top of my head to, um, to something that will, that will come into, you know, one of the kind of peak experience stories. Yeah. So yes, I, can, I can see the links. Okay. Fantastic. So if there's nothing else, let's head into our values work. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. yeah. I just want to set a little context first and give you my uh, working, my way of working with values. Mm -hmm. I like to think of values as inner light bulbs. Mm -hmm. And we have an array of light bulbs and each of them represents, each of the bulbs represents a value, mm -hmm. a personal value. And when those values are lit up, when we have them in our life, then we're all lit up metaphorically we're inspired we're ready to go yeah and when those lights are dim we feel a little less inspired and sometimes they get smashed by different things or they go out or you know a fuse blows or something mm -hmm. and so i like to play with that metaphor yeah yeah so i've asked you to come up with peak experiences and the reason i do that is because those are times when all your light bulbs are on yes so to go find and name the light bulbs, I say, come up with a peak experience because I know that your light bulbs are lit up there, at least some of them. And yeah. so we go look at that story and we look to identify what are the bulbs in that story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
that can be taken to other stories and other situations. Yeah. So I just wanted to have that as a context. Does that work for you? <clears throat> yeah, I love the metaphor of the light bulbs. I think that's really good. Okay, great. So you came up with a peak experience or two or? Yeah, a couple. Yeah, yeah. a couple, great. Let's start with one. A couple that uh, almost immediately came to mind, actually, you know, and, and they're fairly recent um, experiences. Um, but, you know, very, they just very instinctively popped up in my mind. So I thought I've got to go with those experiences. So the first of them was about a year and a half ago. I did uh, a green woodworking course. Okay. Um, in, it was, it's essentially um, learning how to make joints in, um, in, in green wood logs that you would use to build a roundhouse. A roundhouse, okay. Yeah, so it's very specific form of carpentry. Hmm. Um, so when wood is cut into uh, square planks, Mm -hmm. square or rectangular lengths you have straight lines yeah so you can work off those uh straight lines for measurements very very easily right but if you're working with a branch that has come off a tree mm. there are no straight lines mm. so the joinery becomes very very difficult because you can't measure so there are these ancient practices that the wonderful thing about green woodworking is that um you don't use any power tools you only use hand tools mm -hmm. Um, so I went and did this course, this amazing guy called Adrian Lehman, who builds uh, roundhouses uh, out of trees that he fells by hand, you know. Okay. I did this course out in the countryside. It was a four-day four course um, with, I think there were about, about 25 to 30 of us, and we all camped out. His woodworking yard is an open yard, so there are just three barns facing each other. Um, with a composting toilet and we all camped in the field next door uh, so we were down in um, Gloucestershire a very very beautiful part of the country uh, and for four days we we literally took these huge uh, tree limbs and started from the very beginning of stripping down the bark um, getting down to to the to the bare wood and then learning how to how to make these joints and using you know all the old tools like um, uh, shave blades and side axes and chisels we we uh, created the these joints the joints that you would use to put together uh, a greenwood house and I was so happy <laughs> doing this course it was absolutely uh, thrilling to me and the thing that I noticed actually was coming home from that course you know because I'd gone and lived in this field with these people I think it was actually it was five days it was four nights and five days um, uh, and I went, on, on the drive back home I was my whole mood was different Mm. so inspired I was so uplifted I was very uh, at one with myself so um, yeah that's that's my first peak experience fantastic it's a beautiful story mm. yeah so our job now is to find what are the light bulbs yeah what are the elements of that and where we're going is not to look at the specific circumstances so it's not camping and it's not joinery and it's not mm -hmm you know, green wood, but it's mm. that thing, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you the words that I wrote down. Yeah. And these might work for you. So you just notice when they like, I, if any of these words land with you, like, oh yeah, that, that's what's inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nature, beauty. Yeah, definitely. Something about hands work, physicality. Mm, yeah, very definitely. Yeah. I, um, I love working with my hands. I, I love I love manual work, and I love the fact that these uh, the, the tools that we were using were, you know, are all hand tools. They're you know you, you deliberately do not use power tools. So there's an engagement of the body. Yeah. Okay. Body. And 
I, uh, I also had tradition, something mm -hmm. about the tradition of the tools or the tradition of the methods. Yeah. Is that tradition for you? Yeah, very, de very definitely. It's, um, yeah, that really lights up a valve in me. Yeah. And I, I, lo I love tradition, actually. And I love, I think what it is about tradition is the ceremony of handing it down. Mm. You know, that you, that you, learn, you learn skills that have been honed over a very, very long time by, you know, a, a long line of people. Yeah. Yeah, tradition, very much so, yeah. Yeah. And then I wrote new stroke old. Like, mm. it's new for you, but you like the tradition or something around, I don't know. There was something about that. Yeah, new. I. Yeah, it's very interesting, actually, um, because there is definitely something in here about learning. Learning. Uh, learning something new, which relates to the bigger goal. But that's a kind of double-edged thing. I suppose we'll delve into this in a bit, but there's a, there's a double-edged thing about learning. There are some places where I'm very comfortable learning, mm -hmm. some places where I'm really uncomfortable learning. And I think that I have shied away from learning a lot in my life mm -hmm. uh, and perhaps deprived myself of opportunities because of that but where i feel comfortable learning i really want to dive in and this is related to the next uh, peak experience actually but we'll come to that so yeah there's something but it, so it's quite interesting new and old actually <laughs> yeah that's, uh, i i definitely love to learn new things uh-huh yeah. yeah but sure any Anybody's going to be, if we overextend ourselves, like learn something you're not interested in, you know, yeah, might be a step too far. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I also wrote down, um, and these might have been covered already, methodology, mm -hmm. immersion, mm -hmm. and community. Yes. And please, if they don't, like, I'm only looking for the ones um, I'm seeing to you. I immersion really I jumps out, actually. Yeah. There were, there, were, there were moments during that weekend where, you know, you have to be very, very specific with certain tools. Because if you're, if you're a millimeter out, that translated, you know, to a, to a, to a larger scale mm -hmm. means that if, there's, if the joint's a millimeter out here, three yards down the beam, the, you know, the beam is really very far out of, of where it should be. Yeah. So there's something very precise about the way in which you have to work. And that precision takes time and takes a lot of concentration. So you do actually get totally immersed in it. Mm. There's just, there, there were moments when I was you know, chipping away with, with a chisel at something very, very fine you know, making sure that you don't split the grain, which means that you're totally focused on this thing. And I love that because you suddenly come out of it and you realize you've been working for hours and you didn't even notice the time go by. Mm, so I love that immersion, definitely. Mm. Uh, and community is very strong. The thing about doing this kind of work is it's actually very dangerous. Mm. You know, um, Trees are incredibly heavy. And so, you know, you're, you're working with people, A, to solve problems, you know, solving the problems of, of joinery and how a building will hold itself up, but B, to take care of each other and to take care of self because, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a dangerous thing to do. And if you're, if you're climbing on top of a building to get a beam into place, there's, there's a lot of, you know, danger involved. So you have to, you have to work together as a community. And actually these courses, the guy who runs the course said at the very end of the course, he said, you may think that you've come here to learn something specific like working with wood. But actually he said, I run these courses because it, I, I'm, a, I'm a passionate believer in community and community solving problems together. So what you've actually been doing this weekend is learning how to work with people you didn't know. Lovely. You know, which is a lovely ethos. And yeah. I came away from that thinking, yeah, you know, I was very, you know, over a short period of time, you become very close to these complete strangers, mm. you know, because you have to, and also because you're immersed. Yeah. <clears throat> and the danger part, was that in itself, uh, you know, the risk, danger, is that something that's uh, a light bulb or is that just part of, no, well, there is danger, so the community is 
It is a light bulb, strangely enough, actually. Um, yes, I do like taking risks. I mean, it, it, in certain areas, obviously. But it is part of creativity, taking risks. I mean, as an actor, you know, um, you, you're always taking risks. Always, because you're always exposed, you know. And I, and I love rehearsal rooms for that reason, because actually the most creativity comes out of a, of a moment when somebody's prepared to take a risk, when mm. somebody's prepared to look like a fool, you know. Um, and so on a site like that, uh, yeah, danger and risk is part of it. It gets the adrenaline going. And it's all connected to creativity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So risk, danger, creativity, being exposed. Yeah. Those all fit together somehow. Yeah. We'll, we'll come back to that. Yeah. 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 They fit together somehow. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay. Anything else? Uh, that I that I haven't mentioned that you see is in that story. I, uh, I don't know about you know the, the value in getting too specific here, but when you said nature, I mean that's a very large part of it for me, because not only are you in nature, uh, you're working outdoors, but you're actually working with nature. So uh, you know I love trees. Uh, funnily enough, both my first name and my surname allude to trees and and tree professions <laughs> so i've always had this thing about trees uh, and wood i love working with wood but just tell it just uh, I'm, my attention is now there how how are those how are those oh so my name is silas carson so silas is a derivative of sylvanus who was the roman god of the trees okay and uh, sorry not a derivative a diminutive uh and carson would be so surnames usually the origin of surnames is around you know what you did as a as a as a profession yeah so carson is the son of the charman and the charman is the person who makes charcoal so they would have been foresters they would uh, have okay. looked after a piece of of forest um and used all of the offcuts to make charcoal and they would have had children and their sons would have been carson Right, got so, it. So I have this kind of sylvan quality to both of my names. So uh, I love trees and I love um, working with wood, but you know, coming back to the thing about nature, it's not just being in nature, you actually have to listen to nature because mm -hmm. trees and wood speak to you. Mm -hmm. You have to understand uh, what the wood is, how grain, how, where the grain is running. And there are certain ways in which a, a, a a piece of tree will not want to be used in a building and certain ways in which it will want to be used and you have to listen to that so there's something about and again you know taking risks and and it being dangerous you have to really listen to nature in other words it's it's less about man being in control of nature and more about man listening to nature mm. in, in order to be able to work with it if that makes sense absolutely so working with, yeah, controlling, mm -hmm. yeah, great. Wow, we have a very strong list here. Yeah, that's a, that's a rich vein, isn't it? Absolutely, <laughs> a rich vein. So do you want to tell me your other peak experience and then we'll also look at some... Yeah, so the other peak experience um, was, is actually about being on set. Uh, of a particular program that I was involved with. Um, and I'm not going to mention the program and I'm not going to mention the people involved because this is not about name dropping. Um, and it's not about, I, you know, it's not about the realm of the ego. But I will say that it was, I was surrounded by some incredibly talented people who are, have been, you know, very, um, richly rewarded for their talents, let's say. So I was surrounded by a, a, a group of really, really, um, you know, people at the top of their game uh, in, a, in a program that was beautifully written. Uh, and the joy of it was that we, we were together for a number of months and we all happened. This doesn't often happen. You get a bunch of strangers together. 
that on this occasion it did, that we all got on like a house on fire. So we became a, a very creative family. Um, and the day that I remember particularly was working, this, this program was set in very lavish um, surroundings. So we were, we were mostly filming in two very grand houses just outside of London. And we were blessed with beautiful weather this summer. So I just remember being on set at one point and we'd all gathered in the morning and we were kind of discussing the scene. And I was, it was a beautiful sunny day and we were in this incredibly beautiful grand building. And I remember just looking around the room thinking, you know, I'm surrounded by all these extraordinary people right at the top of their game. But the thing that was uh, most prevalent was all of those minds together creating a story. It was about all of us coming together and trying to make something beautiful. Mm. You don't know that it's going to work, but you're all there trying to, again, kind of solve problems. But the significant thing, thing for me was that in that circumstances, art becomes a leveler. You are all essentially in exactly the same place when you start, no matter who you, you, you are or what your name is or how many awards you might have won. And I remember the strongest feeling of actually like being a part of this community and being as important in that community as any other member of the community. It was, it was very much about equality. So there was a lot of love in the room and there was a lot of respect and um, uh, generosity, you know. So that was for me one of the, just one of the best experiences I've had as an actor. Mm. And it was, it was about the equality of it more yeah. than anything else. Mm. Wonderful story. Thank you for sharing that. I hear a lot of parallels with the previous one. Yeah. All your, you know, community together, solving problems together. Mm. Yeah. Very I recognize much. that in, in parallel. Yeah. And also that thing about creativity and you don't know if it's going to work and some kind of risk and mm. like applying yourself. I heard that in there. Yeah. 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 And you talked about people at the top of their game. And for me, values are not just what do I like in my life, but it's also when you appreciate something about someone else. Yes. I believe there's a value there. So something about top of your game. Yeah. Connecting that to this master in the making and the road and all that. There is something about, mm. you know, um, doing things well. Exquisite comes to mind. And yeah. In your other story, you had uh, precision. Yeah. It feels like there's something uh, around precision, mastery, top of the game. Yeah. Yes. Um, it, was, it was an interesting gig for me because uh, the person that I work most closely with is somebody who has been, uh, I mean, he's in his 80s now. So he's been a film actor for, you know, for decades and has done so many movies. And I grew up, um, you know, watching him and really admiring him. Mm. Being on set with him is a really, really interesting thing because, again, he's, you know, he, he doesn't have a huge ego. He's, he just loves what he does. But his knowledge of lenses and cameras was exceptional because he's had mm. a whole lifetime. So I was able to, it, you know, this thing of when you're standing next to somebody who knows a great deal, there, there's, a, there's a kind of, you know, um, something happens by osmosis. You learn a great deal. Mm. And, and because of the kind of, you know, um, because of his personality and, and the relationship between us, again, it was out of the realm of ego. He was also, uh, he started each scene as though he didn't know what he was doing. So, you know, we, he started each scene as though there, it was, there was a discovery to be made. Mm. So I learned a lot from him, but I learned a lot from him, you know, um, in an unusual setting because there was so much space to, to watch and, and to learn and we were on a level together. So, you know, he was as interested in what I had to say and uh, was, you know, as in need of support from me as I was from him in the scenes that we did together. So again, there's, there's something about learning, there's something there about, uh, you know, being on a level, but there's something about learning from a master. Mm. Being able to watch somebody who has, you know, been at the top of their game for so long. 
and you appreciate the fact that they've done that. Yes, I mean, I really, really admire that. I, I admire longevity, especially in the, you know, in, in the world of acting. Um, it's a very, very tough profession. And people who duke it out for that amount of time, you know, um, the, the sheer longevity of it means that, that they've got things to say mm. know, and things to teach. And things to pass on. Things to pass on, exactly. There's that tradition handing it down also from yeah. the story. Yeah. And something hierarchical about that in, 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 you know, in a very positive sense, people handing down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Now there's a way that you've talked about this situation where you don't want to name drop and you don't want to talk about ego. That for me is also revealing a value of yours. Right. Yeah. That respect is that, what is that? Um, yes, there is respect for the other person and the other people, but there's also, uh, this is, you know, it's, it's, this is, this is about me, actually, this is about not going into that realm of, of name dropping. I'm not here to impress anybody who may be watching this, this recording. You know, but I'm also holding myself back from that. I think that, you know, you, as an actor, there's always that struggle between the ego and the artist because you, your ego is constantly being uh, flattered. It just happens that way. And it's also constantly being damned. You know, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an up and down thing. But because you are being watched and because you are being applauded, and when you go into the realm of film, being watched and applauded means that you could be known on a, on a, on a huge scale. Mm. You might even be famous. Mm -hmm. And that does things to you. So I'm, I'm constantly trying to pull away from, you know, just falling into those traps. The story for me is about what was happening for me in that moment. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, how did I feel because I was surrounded by all these, for want of a better word, very famous people. Yeah. yeah. So if that were representing one of those light bulbs, mm. that, that concept, what would you call it? Modesty, I think there's, some, there's something in there about modesty. Okay. I think Good. that modesty keeps you learning. Mm. Okay. Which, I, which is interesting because I suppose I shy away from, you know, the being of a master and, you know, and I go towards making of a master. Yeah. Because, you know, the idea of mastering a talent, you know, is different from me being a master. You right. Know? Yeah. I think that's kind of linked. Mm. There's something about, you know, trying to keep that modesty. I, you know, for me as an actor, I, I'm always like, it's not about you, it's about the story. Yeah. How do you tell the story as opposed to how do you look or how do you come across? Is there something, can I call that artistry? Mm. Yeah. The artistry is more important than ego. Yes, definitely. So you're there to serve the artistry. Yeah. Right? Service is an interesting thing. Service is an interesting thing, actually, because I am in service to the story. Mm. Because, you know, we know as coaches, you know, our job is to remove ourselves from the situation and be in service to the client. Mm. You know, what is good for the client here? What does the client need? Mm. What do I need? You know, so there is something of that in there, that, that kind of modesty is actually about being in service. You know, removing one's ego from the situation so you can see what the story needs or what the client needs. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So modesty, service, artistry, those are, those are connected somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, is there anything else that I haven't named that you see in that story on set? Any other values, light bulbs that might be shown? Um, well, again, it's community, but uh, which we touched on. But it, there's something about family 
there actually that you become you become something of a family yeah that's what wrote down creative family i think is what you said yeah, yeah creative family yeah Mm. You know, and and then that brings all of the uh, all all of the things that family brings along. You know, you have to you have to manage your relationships. Mm -hmm. you know? Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Oh, there is something about the setting. Actually, there's something about it was just so grand. You know, I love those big houses, and there's something in there about the aesthetic. Mm. We're working in a very, very aesthetic environment. Beautiful houses, beautiful grounds, you know. And uh, I mean, if you if you take away the kind of politics of that kind of money, actually, there was just something wonderfully, there was something wonderfully grand about the whole thing. Mm. You know, very aesthetic and and beautiful. And that was inspiring. It was inspiring to be on a set like that. I love that you have this appreciation for the grandeur, if I can call it that. This, you know, the aesthetics like that, but also the aesthetics of a green wood roundhouse. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I don't know if those come from the same source and it's just about aesthetics or if they're different from one another. They are different from one another because uh, one is all about simplicity and the other one's all about grandeur. and They both appeal to me. <laughs> as long as they have the aesthetics in order or something <laughs> yes exactly yes exactly yeah nice. yeah yeah i suppose it is about aesthetic because people can be terribly grand and lavish in an extremely distasteful way you know? yeah yeah <coughs> yeah yeah okay well let's see if we can start narrowing these down not that we have to eliminate any but i'm just sort of organizing all of these capturing them so that we can name the light bulbs and use them going forward. Yeah. We'll come back to, I think I also asked you to come up with some stories about when you were upset or distressed or something. We'll come back to those. Yeah. If that's okay. Yeah. So, and we don't have to worry about order of importance mm -hmm. at the moment. And I find it helpful. I think people find it helpful generally to have somewhere around eight or so values, mm -hmm. you know, six to 10. Mm -hmm. Once you have 12 or so, it starts being like, you know, all over the place. Yeah. So let's see what we can do to find like those eight plus or minus a couple primary things that you find inspiring. Yeah. There's definitely something about community and creative family. Yeah. And can we put those together, creative family and community? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking down here because I'm writing as well. Yeah. What would you want to call that value? Um, what would be like the headline name? Because we'll add some words to it to help flesh it out. I don't know, really. Uh, I mean, community and creative family says it all. I think. I, I, I kind of, I shy away from saying community because um, what, am I, what am I thinking here? It is about coming together as a creative family. It's about, it's about connection, mm -hmm. solving problems together. So it's sort of about, it, it, it's about connection, but it's also about respect in the community that you are part of a whole so maybe community is the right word okay so community is the the right main word but we'll also put with it creative family solving problems together yeah connection part of the whole yeah but the main word is community yeah so these are the starting points and i'm going to have you ask you to Tone them, fine tune them, yeah. so they fit you. Yeah. And then, and then we'll have our light bulbs named. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Then there's something about um, aesthetics. Mm -hmm. Mm 
and I don't know if that's the right word, but uh, let's see what, what goes with that. Is the um, uh, beauty. Beauty. Is nature part of that? Yes, definitely. Yeah. I think aesthetic is the right word, actually. Because that, in, that to me encapsulates a lot of things. It encapsulate the, encapsulates the art, you know, of both situations and they're very different forms of art. Yeah. Um, but it is about making something beautiful. Yeah. And both in very different ways. One's a very simplistic beauty mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and the other one's an extremely complex storytelling beauty, but it is, it is about the aesthetic. Yeah. And, and, the, and the, the, the settings are also very aesthetic to me. And so would this word artistry be part of that? Yes. Yeah, although there's, a, there's another element to artistry that, you know, the one element of it is creating something beautiful. Mm -hmm. And the other element of artistry is the doing of it, which is, which is towards creativity actually making something out of nothing. Okay. Yeah, I think aesthetic is the right word for, for, for now. You know, what I think about is, um, you know, where I live, uh, my garden, uh, the kind of, you know, the, the, the wider world, I want things to look and feel beautiful. Mm. There's something about making beauty. Great. Great. Well, let's have that lead us into that physicality, that making using your hands. Is that a separate value? The, um... I, think that, I think that comes under creativity. I think the, the value is creativity. Okay. You know, and... I love that word creativity because it, it has in it the kernel create, you know, to create something out of nothing. There's something absolutely essential to life. Life comes out seemingly of nowhere. Mm. And I love that thing of making something, you know, you, 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 you take a tree and you make a building out of it, mm -hmm. you know, or you come together as a group of people and you make a story from absolutely nothing. So all the physicality, body, the working with the tools, that's all part of creativity. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Great. So we have community. Mm -hmm. We have aesthetics. Mm -hmm. This is so far, yeah? We have creativity. Mm -hmm. And then there may be something about a different type of artistry. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I'm going back to my list from the story. Something, uh, there's the tradition, handing it down, longevity, you had said mm -hmm. in the, the, the set the story. I wrote down the word legacy. There's something there about the handing yeah. it down, the tradition, the hierarchy is a word you'd put in there also. Yeah. Actually, that's, you know, that's, that's really, that's really quite a surprising, um, value for me but but it really does it, it, it does light a bulb up actually um, <laughs> yes I'm thinking about you know actually being on set with these people there's a tradition there's a linear tradition there of somebody who knows so much about the craft mm. handing it down passing it on you know to, to, to somebody else who's sort of you know coming up the ranks or has not has had as, as much experience um, and it's, it is the handing down of knowledge that has been honed. That's the most important thing there. Um, what would you call that? Sorry? What would you call that handing down um, of knowledge that has been honed? I think I, I think I said that right. I don't know what I would call it. Actually, there's... Uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff in there that's coming up for me about ceremony. You know, how important ceremony is to, to human beings and, um, and, and respecting age and elders. 
There's something eldership? about sorry, eldership, yeah. Eldership? eldership, yeah. I would put tradition and eldership along, you know, it along the same lines. There's something about respecting um knowledge that has that has been you know honed of, uh, over a very very long period of time and that being handed down mm -hmm. so that was the, very definitely the experience for me on set you know i once i was able to kind of remove my ego from that situation i was very much open to to absorbing from masters who were around me and that was a very I don't want to use the word sacred, actually. It was a very sacred, respectful environment, you know. So, and the same with, um, you know, with these traditional tools and uh, traditional ways of working. You actually feel that you're part of a kind of a, a line of ancestral knowledge, mm -hmm. you know. I don't want it to sound too grandiose about that, but that actually what it is what it is, you know. So, yeah, tradition, eldership. So for now, I'm just going to capture these together in, in like a little thought. Yeah. Opposite ceremony, tradition, sacred ancestral knowledge, handing down, honed knowledge, uh, respect, hierarchy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Those are together in their own in their own little um, group. Yeah. And you can uh, work with those and find what's the you know, what's the one word that you want to represent all of those. Yeah. yeah. Yep. How are we doing? Good. Yeah. Good. Okay. So we've got nature. That's that's in aesthetics. We've got hand tools, physicality, community. That's with community immersion. Um, there's something about immersion, learning, precision, focus. Um, is that all part of the eldership handing down, or is learning its own thing? Um. I think it is part of that actually. I think it's, yeah, it is, it is part of that knowledge learning that's being handed down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. And uh, creativity, the whole thing with creativity and risk. Yeah. There was another artistry that was coming in. Is that something separate from aesthetics? Uh, yes. Yes, I think it is because that's that's the kind of that's the doing of it. You know, the solving of problems comes under creativity. What you're creating comes under aesthetics. You know, <laughs> the, the the place in which you're creating is also part of the aesthetic. But creativity is about the doing. Okay. So it's about the, the, yeah problem solving. Um, risk and all that. Yeah, sure. making something out of nothing. Yeah. Great. Right. And the physical and body. Sorry. I think I, yeah, all this is together. Yeah. Right. The physicality and the body. Yeah. Okay. I'm with you. Sorry. We kind of went back over that. Um, and modesty. Is that all part of, that feels like it's part of eldership, like knowing your play. Yeah, definitely. That's part of eldership and tradition. Yeah. Yeah, because you because when when you when you give yourself to that, when you give yourself to the fact that you are essentially a novice, or you might be you know a little bit further on down the road than a novice, but you're not an elder yet, you have to you know you have to be modest enough to open yourself up to the fact that somebody in front of you knows more than you do. Yeah, <laughs> and you have to be open to receiving that. Lovely. So is it knowing your place? Yeah. Your less. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really interesting thing to come up actually in, in this exercise as, as, as a value. Because I have this whole shadow side to that, you know, which is, which comes into the big goal and, and the whole of this journey actually, which is about already wanting to be a master, already wanting to be there, you know, and so because I'm not there, I have, I have at certain points in my life given things up because I'm not, I haven't been prepared to practice enough to let my ego go. There's a part of me that wants to be that person. I want to be the one who's recognized by the critics or the audience, 
you know. And so, because I'm not there, I, I, I struggle with with the journey of having to to get there. So, I suppose that that program that I was talking about, my peak experience, really appealed to me because something happened where I could let all of that go, and I was open to the mastery that was around me, and learning. And so, it was a very rich experience for me. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And and I'm just I'm also wanting to give voice to the part of you that says. And I and I have some ego, and I you know I don't want to marginalize that and yeah, say totally, so. totally, yeah, 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 yeah. So it, I don't know if there's a value in there as well, like something about it is about me, or you know. Um, I don't know if it's a value, but um, I mean, look, I'm an actor. I love being seen. Mm. You know, <laughs> of course, there's a of course there's a huge ego here. I don't think I'd be a I don't think you can be a very good actor if you don't have a good ego. It's just about how you kind of manage it, really. And I don't see ego as a bad thing. Okay. You know, it's just about how you manage it. Because ego can get in the way. But it's, you know, it's very much wanting to be seen, wanting to be liked, wanting to make people laugh, that makes me get up in front of other people and show off. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. So for the moment, let's because it does bring some light and uh, lightness and inspiration to you i mean it is yeah. motivating, right yeah yeah totally yeah, yeah yeah so do we call that being seen yeah yeah, yeah. That, that encapsulates it being seen and then there's managing ego and being liked and yeah showing off even you said yeah yeah that's mm. great it's fun <laughs> okay i actually think we've organized these most of everything we've talked about into these yeah. five different camps. Yeah. Yeah, so community, aesthetics, eldership, I think we're calling that one. Yeah. Creativity and being seen. Yeah. How's that feel to have those five? Uh, that feels really good, actually. That feels really good and quite surprising. Yeah. They feel, um, what can I say about them? There's something about all of them that feels, and I, I really mean this in the best way, feels very profound, very deep. Like they, they touch a very, um, uh, a, a, a very deep vein. Mm. I mean, eldership, incredible. Creativity, aesthetics, yeah. They touch a very deep vein and then there's these little flowers that come off them. <laughs> yeah. Trees with branches. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so let's look at the other side uh, and things that irritate you. Yes. I yes. you to come up with some things that irritate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the, the first thing that, that I thought about um, was when, when people don't listen. Mm. There are those people in, in life who just love to talk at other people. You know? yeah. <laughs> uh, mansplainers, you know, but people who don't, they're just not... Um, it's not really interesting what anybody else has to say. They're just, they just they just want to get back to what they have to say. Yeah. So they might even ask you a, a question that relates to you, like, what have you been up to today? And as you start to tell them, they go, well, what I did was I went into the, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, just, it just really bugs me that people, I don't have many friends who talk at me. I yeah. tend to weed them out of my life, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, when we have these irritations, they're usually things that are blocking a value or if you think of the light bulbs, it's either dimming it or smashing it or putting a cloth over it. Yeah, something. yeah, yeah. What's the value there that's being stepped on or? Um, the, there are a couple of, the, of values that immediately come to mind. Uh, and the first one is respect. Mm. You know, um, just having respect for other people, respect for the planet, respect in general. But yeah. the other one is curiosity. Okay. Curiosity is a big value of mine. And I think that when people are like that, they display a total lack of curiosity in other people. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> They're just completely bashing that curiosity and respect value. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. absolutely no interest in, in, in kind of like looking at or understanding who or what's in front of them. Yeah. Just want, okay. to, impose, just want to impose their perspective on the world, you know. 
Yeah. Now, are these respect and curiosity, are they part of the other values we've captured or um, they're on their yeah, own? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that curiosity is definitely a part of creativity. Okay. Um, especially in my world, the world of acting, because, you know, I, I can link that. It's a curiosity about people. You know, right. Curious about how people work in certain situations. Mm. Uh, and I would say respect comes under the, the value of, of eldership. Okay. It's a kind of branch of that. You have to engage with respect for tradition and respect for, you know, people of longevity. Yeah. Mm. I think those kind of come under those headings. Okay. All right. So it's, they're really just underlining the values that we've already part yeah. of. Yeah. 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 Any other uh, um, sources of irritation? Uh, one of my major ones is cruelty to animals. Mm -hmm. you know, um, and again, I don't absolve myself of this, uh, even though, you know, I, I do what I can. Um, you know, I don't eat animals, animal products, but I am part of systems. You know, and I am part of uh, a, a global community of human beings who, as a collective, we treat animals appallingly. And it, it's one of the things that, that deeply upsets me. But also, um, you know, just on a very kind of individual basis, when people are unkind to animals or cruel to animals, don't respect animals in their space, mm. I, I cannot abide by that. I, it really, um, I find it deeply, deeply disturbing. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. yeah. So um, underneath, so what are the values that are being stepped on underneath that cruelty? Uh, kindness and fairness. You know, um, yeah, cruelty is to the opposite of kindness. Mm -hmm. I, I, I cannot understand why somebody would not want to walk through their day attempting to be kind. Yeah. Rather than allowing themselves to be cruel. Mm. Um, and um, fairness, because, you know, we all share this planet. <laughs> mm. And by all of us, I mean all living creatures. Yeah. You know, and there is something incredibly unfair about the situation we find ourselves in, whereby humans have convinced themselves since the kind of you know monotheistic religions built up that they have dominion over over nature we don't have dominion over nature we are part of nature and being part of is the fairness you know you are part of something you don't have dominion over it yeah yeah so kindness itself is it doesn't feel like it's alongside any of your other values it seems like another one to add it does actually yeah Mm -hmm. Yes, it doesn't feel like it's a subset or, you know. And then the fairness, part of nature could be, I suppose, part of your community, although it does have a little different feel to it. There's this like systemic. Yeah. Thinking, what, where would you like to put that? Hmm. Maybe fairness, equality is just another you would use the word equality and uh, leveling and equality yes yes it, i i think actually part of community i think it is part of community okay yeah part of the whole so that, yeah, yeah that's really what you're talking about so fairness belongs in there as part of whole and yeah, really yes exactly and it's the same sort of thing you know like recognizing that you don't have uh, dominion over nature is also recognizing that you don't have a higher position in a community than anybody else. Mm. Uh, quality and fairness is what is needed to make the community work. Yeah. You may be granted a position by that community, but it's not your right. And it's only something you hold on to for the sake of the community. Right. There's that modesty and ego and it's about me thing. Mm, 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 mm. It's like we really have a picture of you and what's yeah. most meaningful to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So were there any other uh, instances of? Um, one mm. last one was dropping litter. I hate it when people drop litter. I absolutely, especially when people throw litter out of their cars. Mm. You are in a container. 
you know, where you could just leave the litter until you get home with that container. You could empty the container of your car, you know, yeah. into something, but th deliberately throwing it out of the window is, it just really bugs me. And, and, it, and it touches all the things we've already spoken about. Mm. Respect, aesthetic, it just looks so horrible when the world is full of rubbish. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, you know, fairness, treating nature with kindness, you know, mm -hmm. but that's one of the things that popped up for me. Hate it. Yeah, no. <laughs> and it's very linked to, it's very linked to aesthetic because I don't like a messy home either. Yeah, you know, um, much to my partner's kind of uh, stress and chagrin, I love a very tidy, ordered home, and that's part of aesthetics. Yes, of course, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> so, one of the reasons I go there and specifically ask about what's annoying is partly as a instructive piece that if things are specifically annoying to you and maybe not to others it's because it's your personal value that's being stepped on in the moment yeah 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 and other people have different kinds of values yeah yeah absolutely yeah i was about to make a comment about i don't know what the value is about throwing litter out of a car but let's not go there <laughs> so yeah I'll keep myself and take it out of the conversation <laughs> So I like to make distinctions between two kinds of values. Um, one I call foundation values and another is inspiration. Mm. And the reason that I've done this is because sometimes people come up with values like honesty, integrity, and things like that, that are obviously very good and strong, but they're not necessarily inspiring. Yeah, got it. So your community inspires you, it sounds like. I've heard lots about that. And um, there are other things like, I'm not sure about kindness, but because it came out of the asking about the things that irritate you, it's more likely to be a foundation value. Yeah, and you notice when foundation values aren't there. Mm -hmm. It's not like you get inspired necessarily by a foundation value, but you notice they're irritating when they're not there. Mm -hmm. Yes. So inspiration or foundation, which would you call which? So community, would you call that? I don't want to guess for you. I'm assuming those first ones were inspirational, but you tell me. Um, yeah, I think it's inspirational. And aesthetics? That also feels inspirational. Let me just check for a moment, because actually I was thinking so too at first, and then I thought, well, if yeah. you were living in a world Tricky one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it might be a little bit of both because it feels yeah. like you know if there's if your house is not tidy and those people are throwing things out of their windows and you have to work on a set that's awful and yeah, you know, real tacky thing. It feels like that might be a irritation, a point of irritation. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it's a, yeah. I kind of I found it between the two actually. Okay, let's. Well, what about both? It's both inspiration and foundation. It's a bit of both, yeah. Because actually creating is that, well, I was going to say creating aesthetic is an inspirational value, but that's creativity. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I think, hmm. Let's come back to it. Should we come back to it? Let's come back to it. Yeah. How about eldership? Uh, that's, <laughs> I was going to say that's foundation, but I think it might be inspirational. It's interesting because I think it's a bit of both again. Mm -hmm. I think eldership and you know respect and tradition are foundational. They're part of our foundation, actually. Mm -hmm. But they the learning from is part of the inspiration. Right. I think mostly foundational, I would say. Okay. Yeah. Great. And then creativity. I think you just said that's inspirational. Yeah. yeah. And the being seen, managing ego, being liked, showing off. That's inspirational as well, I think. Okay. And then kindness. Foundational. Okay. Yeah. So the reason to make a distinction about them, I mean, um, it's just, it's, again, it's for awareness. If you notice that you're really irritated, you might look back to these foundational values and say, okay, how, 
how can I shore those up? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need to shore up our foundation. It's like we need to have a strong foundation before we can even think of having inspiration. Mm -hmm. So we're going to score these values and look at how much do you have them in your life and where might you need, not need to, but where could you have more of them? Because you want your light bulbs lit up, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and then if you notice that a foundation value is scored low, it can be a big indication that, oh, that's a place to work. Mm -hmm. That may be too many instructions at the same time. Let's score these. And what I mean by score is let's start with community and look at how much do you have this in your life? a feeling of community and solving problems together and connection and all of that, like on a scale of one to 10. Uh, right now, I would say it's, it's quite low. I would say it's around about four or five. Okay. Uh, that's, that is partly circumstances. Yes. You know, um, we, we're all missing community at the moment. Yes. Um, but it is something that you know comes in and out of my life because because of the nature of my work, I am very often unemployed, as often as I am employed. Mm. So I find myself alone a lot of the time, you know, and not having that creative family or that community, and um, and I miss it, and I have to go out and find it or go out and create it. Right. So at the moment, it's quite low, I would say. And okay. Very noticeable. Yeah, so four to five on that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then aesthetics? Um, right now, I would say quite high. I would say it's around about seven. Okay. It's, yeah, seven. Okay. And eldership? Hmm. Right now, I think instinctively, I want to say it's quite low. Again, around about four. Not quite why sure why I feel that. I feel a bit disconnected from. I'm very aware of poor leadership around and about us, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, and not having many elders to look to. Mm. You know, so um, it feels quite low. And I haven't been in because of circumstances. Again, I haven't been in a situation where I could really connect to. You know, somebody like the person, Adrian, who run, runs this course, who is an elder in woodworking. Mm -hmm. You know, I haven't, yeah, I think it's quite low at the moment. Yeah. Okay. So that's a four. Mm -hmm. I have. Yeah. What about creativity, artistry? That's quite high at the moment, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm always creating, actually. I'm always mm -hmm. finding things to make and do, you know, and at the moment I'm, uh, Doing some landscaping so there's a lot of there's a lot of uh working with nature there's a lot of creativity there there's a lot of uh carpentry involved you know and i'm at home as well you know reading and playing around with my with my new home studio so there's a lot of creativity going on i'd say it's around about eight or nine okay great great and what about being seen hmm not a lot of that happening, but that's also circumstantial. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's circumstantial. I would say three or four. Okay. We're, 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 a lot of us are not really being seen. However, I am being seen right now with you. Mm -hmm. You know, this is this is being watched. So, you know. <laughs> there's some. <laughs> yeah, there's some. There's yeah. some. There's 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 a, there's a bit actually. There's a couple of people have asked to do interviews with me, and I've said yes to them, and. Uh, and that has been about wanting to be seen, actually. So, yeah, I think it's probably quite low. I'd say about four. Okay. Some. Mm. Okay. And what about kindness? Kindness is quite high at the moment. I would say seven or eight. Uh, it's something that is being specifically engendered. Um, it feels like we all need a lot of kindness around us. And I've attached myself to various things. I'm doing some volunteering work. Um, and I've been, you know, I am out in the community at the moment and it, it focuses very much taking care of each other, you know, taking care of the world and people in this situation. So that's quite high right now. Mm. Yeah. So that's okay. a value that's being met at the moment. Great. Yeah. So we need to close, I know, in the, in the next minute or two. Um, and I'm just wanting to have this be a takeaway for you. 
Mm. So you've got the scores. I don't know if you wrote them down. I'm happy to send them to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you can look and see what could I, a couple different things. One, what could I uh, do to shore up some of these lower scored values? Mm -hmm. uh, two, there's also just organizing your values and having the right words and the, you know, in the, just so that we have those handholds going forward. And uh, the other thing is on the big picture about mastery in the making mm -hmm. around your home studio, you might start looking at how can you bring some of your values to that? Mm. So I know there's like, oh, I don't want to do the technology and I, you know, so how could, you know, like, is there an elder that you can learn from and create that relationship around that, for example, or might there be a way to just have it such be such an aesthetically beautiful project that you, it's so tempting for you. Yeah. You create a community around it or something. Yeah where that it's, you know, you're working with your values on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's brilliant. That's, that's, that's kind of the main reason we do that is to keep building inspiration into your yeah. projects, especially when they get tough. Yeah, it's a great question to ask actually, because it immediately makes me think, what values am I not bringing to this, to this project? Mm. You know? Yeah. And, and, it, and it breaks the project down into, into, into something completely different. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll leave you with those bits of things to do and that top question. Great. Thank you yeah. so much. You're welcome. And we'll yeah. be back next time to really dig in and work on, on your journey. Yeah. Fantastic, Laurie. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. All right. Really, really informative. Brilliant. Cool. Thanks, Alice.